Have you ever wondered what tools we have to look into somebody's brain and make decisions about surgery or medications? Making these decisions within seconds can mean the difference between life and death sometimes in neurosurgery. Luckily, these days we have excellent imaging modalities that allow us to look into the brain and make these determinations with accuracy and precision. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about three of those imaging modalities. First of all, head CT. Head CT is the oldest and most abundantly available imaging tool that allows us to look into somebody's brain. It utilizes X-ray radiation to look into somebody's brain and obtain cross-sectional imaging, really, really thin slices, like cutting somebody's head like a tomato slice and looking at it and determining at every level if there is pathology, bleeding, strokes, general large pathologies that we can look at and make decisions about surgery. Now, the head CT is a really good general screening tool and it allows us to get fast, immediate information about somebody's brain. Challenges of head CT come from its inability to look at the brain at a more granular level. The common metaphor that I use is that head CT is like looking at the brain through a fogged up glass. Uh, other imaging modalities allows us to unfog the glass and look at it better. Another significant benefit of head CTs is that when a patient goes into the scanner, it's a very short test and it's through a large donut looking like machine. And so claustrophobic patients generally don't have a reaction to that machine. If we want to look into the blood vessels of somebody's brain and neck, we add contrast to this study and we have what we call a CTA. Now, the challenges of contrast are twofold. One is allergies. So some folks can develop allergies to contrast that can be mild or that can be very severe. Those are generally treated with medications. And especially if you know that you're allergic to contrast, we can pre-medicate you and prevent an allergic reaction. The second problem is in folks that have kidney disease. You can really not give a significant amount of contrast to these folks because then you risk uh, damaging the kidneys even further and causing a significant problem. And here is where MRI comes into play. MRI stands for magnetic resonance imaging. And what MRI is, is like I said before, unfogging the glass and looking at somebody's uh, brain or, or neck for that matter. And it allows us to look at the brain at a much more granular level. It takes a lot longer than a head CT and therefore it's not an ideal test for emergent situations. However, it allows us to look at structure in a, in a much more anatomic way so we can make accurate decisions about surgery, about say resecting brain tumors or other pathologies. Now, MRIs are challenging for folks that are claustrophobic because again, this is a really, really narrow tube uh, where the patient has to go in and obviously that's very challenging from some folks. Again, there's ways to go around that either through medications, sedatives, or through sometimes anesthesia in folks that have very severe reactions but need an MRI. Like in CT, you can get a special image through MRI of the blood vessels of somebody's brain and that's called an MRA. And in those cases, you can have an MRA without contrast, which is a significant benefit as compared to a CTA, and you don't have those downsides, or an MRA with contrast. In most cases, an MRA without contrast is adequate and can give us enough information. And so in folks that have kidney issues uh, or cannot tolerate contrast for whatever reason, an MRA without contrast is a really, really good tool to allow us to, to get information. Now, another downside of MRIs is that MRIs utilize very strong, powerful magnetic fields. So if somebody has metal in their body or they have a pacemaker that's not compatible with an MRI, they really cannot get into the magnet because that obviously will heat up the, those metal fragments or metal pieces in their body. And so in those folks, a CT is the only imaging modality available. Now, there's an additional imaging modality it's specific to blood vessels and that's digital subtraction angiography. Digital subtra subtraction angiography or DSA uh, is an imaging modality that utilizes contrast again and x-ray. And the way we uh, take images in that case is we go through somebody's groin through a needle stick and navigate our catheters and wires. And when we make it into the brain, we shoot the contrast and take pictures and those pictures indicate whether there is pathology in the blood vessels like aneurysms, arteriovenous malformations. Very, very useful uh, imaging uh, modality. Now, obviously, angiography is the gold standard when it comes to blood vessel imaging. 
uh, as compared to a CTA or an MRA. The downside of angiography is that it's more invasive. However, in this day and age, it's an extremely, extremely safe process. Angiography, as I said, is very specific to the blood vessels. It doesn't give you any information on the brain itself. And so in those cases that you need angiography, to look at the blood vessels, but you also need to look at the brain, you have to supplement with a head CT or a brain MRI. All those imaging modalities are phenomenal tools and allow us at this day and age to really look into the brain, identify pathology in a really fast way, and kind of open a window to your brain, if you may. If your doctor believes that you need any of these uh, imaging modalities to get information about your health and help you along your healing process, don't be afraid. They're all extremely safe. And obviously consult always with your, with your doctor about the right imaging modality uh, for your problem. And as always, thank you for your interest on the YouTube channel of the Stroke and Brain Aneurysm Center of Long Island. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, we'll see you in another video. Thank you.